So when you get started, uh, it's important to start with a dry lab on the DaVinci, just learning how the instruments work, uh, getting used to uh, handling them, uh, getting used to how the how the DaVinci works. You learn the instruments, and then just observe operative videos with select procedures, just standard procedures, pyroplasty, nephrectomy, uridory, uridorosity, and so forth, just to figure, see how how things are done. And then you go to the wet lab and um, with a pig model, and you can do. Uh, and then there's a simulator. If you have the raw simulator, or the you can use the have the SI simulator. Um, uh, assist in the OR. That's very helpful to learn just to understand how the DaVinci works. And then the first number of cases are going to be proctored, and that's how long proctoring is necessary remains to be determined. I think the first, the ideal first cases are nephrectomy or nephroeurectomy or a, possibly a pyloplasty in an older child or an adult. Now you're going to say, well, I don't need it for, I, I already do laparoscopic nephrectomy and that works fine for me, I don't have any trouble. But you need to be familiar with the equipment, uh, how it works, how you work on the machine. If you just, just do it on a select few cases, you're not going to become very proficient. So it doesn't mean that you have to do ne robotic nephrectomies for the next 10 years, but while you're getting up to speed, it just helps everybody on your team get used to using the robot. We need to allocate the manpower and we need to uh, allocate the people that you can send for training. You can't just whisk away 10, 15 people from a system to train them in robotics if it's not going to realize uh, uh, its potential within a uh, limited period of time. Uh, a couple day course with a, a pig lab uh, is is the bare minimum uh, to get started. That just sort of gets you an understanding of the program, but you really have to spend much more time uh, training and learning. The initial uh, step should be uh, learning the function of the robot. In the dry lab uh, is a, a useful place for that. This can be practiced over and over again before a patient comes into the room so that the team is, is very efficient at getting things set up. Learning and understanding the procedure is also critical for residents and fellows who may not have quite as much experience with uh, open surgery or laparoscopic surgery, they need to understand the, the details of the, the procedure, the, the anatomy. And these are you know, basic things to, to say, but it's critical. And, and by observing the anatomy that can be seen during robotic procedures, anatomy can be learned. Video review and, and live case uh, observation are, are really important, especially if you have a perceptor you're going to be working with to, to learn that perceptor's technique, I think. Why is this training so important? It's no more see one, do one, teach one. FDA has made it mandatory and instructed the Institute Surgical Company, the manufacturer of the Da Vinci system, that all, to give a comprehensive training to all the surgeons who wish to sit at the, and practice at the Da Vinci system. It's definitely a superior technology than laparoscopy. It's not easy, but lesser learning curve compared to laparoscopy, better ergonomics, user-friendly and surgeon-friendly instruments, Docking, I felt difficult and needs more practice. So it's not just the surgeons who will need the training. The assistants, especially the first assistant, the OT technicians, the technical maintenance personnel, which is uh, hugely important. There is a registry for uh, the robotic surgery people that we maintain in our institute. And uh, there is a person for entering data and all. So we have that also. Uh, but the principles can be uh, well understood from uh, laparoscopic surgery books and the more uh, important uh, things is uh, port placement for the right lobe, for the left lobe and things like that. I don't think it's like the prostate where you can go from open to robotic uh, directly. Uh, so in order to I think, have a successful robotic uh, liver resection program, we have to understand the principles of laparoscopic liver surgery. And if you can, uh, you know, really uh, absorb all these concepts, then, you know, incorporating the robot into that uh, practice is not going to be difficult. But uh, I really uh, believe in this, that uh, uh, those of you need, who are going to uh, go into robotic liver surgery really need to understand the concepts. When you come back, you should have proctorship or mentorship for your first 5, 10 or 20 cases then only you can complete a procedure successfully and then the mentor can correct you, mentor can help you. And now with this multi-specialty use of the robot, even if you have a senior robotic surgeon in any other specialty, he can give you a cover 
and uh, you can start your program and then you will learn the things in a much better way. So learning is a continuous process. It is cannot just finish in two days or five days uh, training or orientation program actually. It's important to minimize the interval between training. And this, is, and this applies to any new technique or device. So once you train, that interval between getting trained and doing your first case should be short. Start simple. You know, I, I say this all the time, and it always amazes me how, I, how often I see this rule violated. Crawl, walk, then run with your cases. And, and again, the surgeon needs to be committed to get through the learning curve. Without that commitment to do cases regularly, to get through the learning curve, there is no reason that individual should start to go down this pathway. The idea behind this is just to really exemplify that uh, where there's a will, there's a way. And with robotic surgery, uh, it's really amazing what we can accomplish, and it's just a matter of figuring out how to uh, either replicate or sometimes even improve upon the open technique uh, inside the body. So when you start off with, use the robot for simple cases, uh, and, and, but then once you get comfortable with using the robot, and, and I don't know when that will be, it could be 30 cases or 50 cases or 300 cases, you'll find, or my feeling is that the robot is better for the tougher uh, cases that you would have done open because, you know, there's very little collateral tissue damage. You can go where you want to uh, and, 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 and then figure out what you want to do. But you do need to plan this. We had done this case. We had done 6,000 robotic cases, but I called Ronnie. Uh, you know, I asked him, how do you loop it? What loop do you use? Are there any special things? Because I knew he had five cases that he had done, and I, or, you know, or I had reviewed that, uh, uh, the, the, the paper that he had, and I wanted to get every benefit that I could before trying it on the patient.